The Quran on Embryology Dr. T.V. N. Persaud Dr. T.V. N. Persaud is Professor of Anatomy, Professor of Pediatrics and Child Health, and Professor of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. There he was the Chairman of the Department of Anatomy for 16 years. He is well known in his field. He is the author or editor of 22 textbooks and has published over 180 scientific papers. In 1991, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCEB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. Dr. Persaud is the penultimate speaker that you are about to hear, saying what he has to say about how science is in total conformity with what was revealed in the Quran 1430 years ago to a man who was illiterate and lived at a time when it was impossible for him to know anything of the complexities of what you have so far heard. Dr. Persaud will be discussing issues pertaining to ladies and how the Quran succinctly and correctly stated scientific facts impossible for anyone to have known at that time. He further states facts and figures pertaining to the current sexual promiscuity and the health-related problems due to this. What is amazing is how this was clearly stated by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, long before any of these facts were known to the medical world. Let's now listen to what Dr. T. V. M. Persaud has to say on these amazing issues. The growth of the fetus progresses rapidly until the beginning of the twelfth week, after which it enters a new phase of rapid growth and dramatic changes. The rapid growth and dramatic changes which occur after the bones have been clothed by muscles have been mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago. And this is recorded, this is the Surah al muminum Ayah 14. The first slide is a scanning electron micrograph of an embryo that is just five weeks old. The embryo, as you will see, is curled. It is no more than a half an inch in length, and the upper part forms two-thirds of the entire body. There is a limb bud there, and there is, in fact, a tail. The heart is in its very primitive stage, but it's in fact beating rhythmically. And this is a special technique which is used for clearing the embryo so that it becomes transparent. And then a stain is used to stain the bony parts which have appeared. And this is what you're seeing here. It comprises mostly of cartilage which gives form to the body of the embryo and confers upon it unquestionably human characteristics. At this stage of a seven-week-old fetus, its own unique personality, perhaps as a thinking, conscious, and feeling being. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, mentioned all these events I've described and their time in the Hadith, and may I have, we don't have a transparency, but I'll read it for you. When 42 nights have passed over the sperm drop, Allah sends an angel to it who shapes it and makes it ears, eyes, skin, flesh, and bones. Then he says, O oh Lord, is it male or female? And your Lord decides what he wishes, and the angel records it. Thank you. Now there is another concept mentioned in the Quran, and that is regarding the soul. There are many thoughts and about the soul, but we know very little of his exact nature. And the Quran has indeed cited this. And this I shall read to you now. They ask thee concerning the spirit of inspiration, shukran, say, the spirit cometh by command of my Lord. Of knowledge, it is only a little that is communicated to you, O man. Thank you very much. I present in this room here, in the, to this audience, a talk I have given earlier this morning, and undoubtedly it's because of the interest of this subject. It is of wide interest, not only to 
Muslims, but I would say to people of all races and people in all countries of the world. And in fact, it's the first time in my life I have given the same paper twice at any conference. And so I feel very special, specially honored. And it deals with the Quranic rules regarding sexuality, the most intimate of relationship between two individuals, marital or sexual relations, and what, what the Quran says about certain aspects of the relationships between man and woman. And there are two or three areas I will touch upon. And the first we will talk about deals with the menstrual cycle. Apart from the aesthetic and hygienic aspects of having sexual intercourse during a woman's menstrual period, there is potential harm for both partners. Regarding the menstrual flow itself, the following statement taken from the 16th edition, which is 1980, of the standard well-known Williams Obstetrics should be noted. And concerning these problems, the Quran states, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 222, they ask they concerning women's courses, say they are a harm and a pollution, so keep away from women in their courses and do not approach them until they are clean. Sexual promiscuity, another area I like to briefly touch on, has long been associated with several venereal infections, in particular syphilis and gonorrhea. The risk of sexually acquired infection increases significantly with exposure to multiple sexual partners. Of great concern is the alarming increase in the incidence of diagnosed genital herpes because of sexual permissiveness. According to the United States Department of Health and Human Studies, which maintain very, very reliable statistics, maybe as many as 20 million individuals have genital herpes and about 300,000 cases are expected annually. And each year between 20,000 and 50,000 new cases of genital herpes are reported in Canada where very reliable statistics are kept. In 1982 there were over 6 thousand cases of herpes virus infections reported alone in Canada. More than 40% of these infections were sexually transmitted and largely involved young adults between the ages of 15 and 19 years. And for many other countries, not only the United States and Canada, it's simply because I have these statistics available and I can depend and rely on them, but the statistics are the same and the prevalence of genital herpes infection makes the disease a virtual epidemic. Among sexually transmitted diseases, it is second only to gonorrhea. The highest incidence of genital herpes occurs among prostitutes, sexually promiscuous young adults, and sexual partners who previously have had herpes infection. In general, this age group is at the highest risk of acquiring sexually transmitted diseases. Within the last three years, there has been an increasing number of reports on acquired immune deficiency syndrome, which you all know as AIDS, a disease of emerging epidemic proportion. It is attracting an extraordinary amount of attention. Some of you may know that it was featured in the August issue of Time magazine interest and concern on account of its unknown etiology and poor prognosis. There is no known cure for this illness too, which makes previously healthy adults become immunodeficient and in most cases the victims will die. It is particularly prevalent among male homosexuals, but epidemiological trends indicate that it is slowly increasing among heterosexuals and will gradually spread to the general population. In fact, this has been predicted by just about every agency studying AIDS that this will gradually permeate into the general population. As you can see, AIDS as a public health problem has been featured as a, not a public, as a national problem, an international problem, a problem of worldwide concern, has been featured in Times Magazine. It is now considered to be the most important new public health disease in North America. Because of the progressive and relentless epidemic, there is every fear that the disease 
with all its frightening implications, might gradually spread to the general population. The consequences and dangers of promiscuous sexual relationships and deviant sexual practices have been expressed in this hadith some 1400 years ago. The lewdness will not exist among people until they appear as a common practice and plagues and new disease which did not exist before will spread among them. The word lewdness encompasses adultery, fornication, I'm told, homosexuality, bestiality, and all other sexual perversions. And it is not wide stretched of any imagination that we should not consider herpes and AIDS as clear examples of new diseases and indeed at the present time new diseases for which we have no cure. Thank you very much.